Hey bakers, John Cannell from Preppy Kitchen here, and today we're making chicken pot pie soup. It's like soup and chicken pot pie had a delicious baby, and you're gonna eat every single last drop. Did I mention these puff pastry Parmesan thyme crackers? They're amazing, and you're gonna love it. Let's get started. For an extra punch of flavor, we're gonna roast our carrots and potatoes. These are gonna be so delicious. You might wanna like make double because I snacked on a ton of these during recipe testing. These are little Yukon Gold baby potatoes and they're super creamy. So we're just gonna cut them in half and maybe like six pieces each. Think of like nice pieces that'll end up on a spoon. It'll also help them roast really quick. I wanna end up with two and a half cups of potatoes-ish. You can always add more. Make it four cups if you want. The potatoes are really good. One generous cup of potatoes, one and a half more to go. Two and a half cups of potatoes on my roasting pan, and now I want about two cups of carrots. They are gonna shrink up in the oven, so err on the side of generosity here. That might be enough, let's check it out. Give your carrots a quick trim. Now we're gonna cut them into like quarter inch thick slices or so. Careful of your fingers. <laughs> Remember, you're holding anything that you're chopping like this you're protecting those little precious fingertips and only having your knuckles as a guide on the knife. Ooh. And be extra careful at the tip. That's about two cups. Let's dump this onto our baking sheet. Pull it up here. We're going to liberally drizzle two tablespoons of olive oil on here. Crack some pepper. That was about half a teaspoon-ish. And then we're gonna sprinkle one teaspoon of sea salt on here as well. If you're wondering why people specify a type of salt like salt, salt, it actually isn't. If you're using like iodized table salt, it's pretty harsh. Sea salt's a little bit mellower and then, you know, there's various varieties and textures as well. Give that a nice toss. We want everything coated and seasoned up. This will cook for 14 minutes at 450. Halfway through, you're gonna toss things, not with your fingers, it'll be scorching hot, and just mind the edges because they will cook first, especially if you have like a hot spot in your oven. All right, into the oven. While that's in the oven, let's do some more chopping. One cup of celery, and it's gonna be pretty thinly sliced. One cup of celery. That's about it. You can give it a little bit of a further chop as well. Now, I need two cups-ish of onion. That's a little bit less than this, but I love onion. I'll be using some more. Same for the garlic. Okay, let's give that onion a dice. That's a generous cup right there, and one more. This is my favorite way to chop onions up, by the way. If you have a way that you think is better, let me know in the comments, and I would love to learn from you. This is pretty quick, though, and it's fairly safe. Haven't cut myself yet. Let's add this into a bowl as well, carefully. Okay, it's a big two cups. Supposed to use a tablespoon of garlic. I'm assuming that's about like 10 cloves, but I'll be conservative and go one, two, three, four, five, six cloves. Just give them a smash. That helps to release their oils. Oh, and I chop that whole onion without tearing up until just now, I'm pretty impressed. That was a nice delayed reaction there. All right, now, chop, 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 chop. All right, I have my onion. <laughs> Garlic's getting added to the onion. For this recipe, you can use one and a half to two plus pounds of chicken. I'm using closer to two. I love my chicken soup just full of ingredients. We're gonna give this just a really quick dice. We wanna have nice small pieces that fit on your spoon and they're gonna be really nicely browned. I cubed my chicken breast. You could use whatever you'd like. I actually prefer dark meat, but some people in my household will not touch it. So we make these sacrifices. Six slices of bacon are also gonna get just a quick chop. The fat from these will render up in our Dutch oven and just add to the depth of flavor. If you don't eat pork, skip the bacon. I actually made a test version of this without last night and it was amazing. <laughs> so both are fine adding about a tablespoon or so of olive oil into my Dutch oven. You could use a big pot if you want to. Once that oil starts to shimmer, add the bacon in and we'll just be moving it around for about six or so minutes until it's nice and crisped up. 
Oh. <laughs> Whoa! Oh my god. Thank goodness I'm wearing glasses. <laughs> Just fishing the crispy ones out so nothing burns and everything gets a nice even bake or cook. Well, I might have had that on high instead of medium, so got crispy, but I think it's totally fine. This recipe is almost foolproof. Seasoning my chicken with a teaspoon of salt and as much pepper as you'd like. Not gonna dictate amounts here. Now we're gonna cook the chicken in that rendered bacon fat and olive oil in a couple batches. We're cooking the chicken until it's just browned, so move it around, you're gonna take it out, do a couple batches, don't let anything burn, and it's gonna cook through during the actual soup simmering, so we're really just kind of sealing in some of that moisture and flavor and giving it a head start. In that same hot Dutch oven, we're adding in our onion, our garlic, and our celery. Stir, stir, stir. It's gonna soften up and give you so much amazing flavor. Channeling Martin Short in the wedding point. What was it? No, wait, in that, uh... Father of the Bride. Amazing. Mmm, that smells like heaven already. I'm also gonna give a little tiny bit of olive oil extra. All right, now we're just gonna stir occasionally for about five to seven minutes. Let this soften up and caramelize just a tiny bit. After your mirepoix is nice and softened, we're gonna add in two tablespoons of butter, stir it up, get them coated, it'll make them nice and glossy, and then it's time for the flour. After the butter's all melted and those vegetables are nice and glossy, we're gonna sprinkle in six tablespoons or 54 grams of all-purpose flour. Stir, 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 and then cook that for a minute. Don't judge me, but I'm using store-bought chicken broth. Four cups, just one full container. If you have the time or you have it in your freezer hanging out, use your homemade chicken broth. It'll be even more amazing, but not everybody has time for that, including me. After the chicken broth, we're gonna add in two and a half cups of milk. You can use 2% or whole, depending on how luxurious you're feeling. Stir it up and we're gonna let it come to a boil. Once your soups come to a boil, reduce the heat down to low and we're gonna add in our chicken, as well as all of our vegetables now. Add in all those delicious roasted vegetables. Stir it up. When our chicken and roasted vegetables go into that pot, we can also add in some thyme. You could dump a few sprigs in here and fish them out at the very end, or you can take the leaves off of the stems, crush them, give them a little chop, and add them in. It's totally up to you. I will just be dumping in the whole thing and fishing them out at the end. But I will give them a little crush just to activate the oils first. And we're gonna let it simmer for about 10 minutes so it all kind of cooks together and thickens up a bit more. All right, after your soup's thickened up, we're gonna add in two cups of frozen peas. Just stir them in. And this is a great time to check the flavor of your soup and see if you need to add any more salt, pepper, or, or whatever. For our thyme parmesan crackers, we're gonna crack one egg into a bowl filled with two teaspoons of water and give it a whisk. Nice egg wash ready to go. I have one sheet of puff pastry that's thawed out. We're going to dump this onto a floured surface. <laughs> Remove the paper. Sprinkle a little bit more flour, I don't want it to stick. And we're gonna flatten it out. This is puff pastry and we don't want it to puff up too much. <laughs> if you wanna make my actual chicken pot pie recipe, click up over here. It has a beautiful lattice top that bakes separately so it's ultra crispy and actually really forgiving if you're doing some hosting duties and you wanna have a nice dinner party with a fancy dish that you can make ahead. My puff pastry is significantly flatter now. We're brushing the entire surface with this egg wash because it's gonna make it nice and golden, but also act as a glue to hold all that cheese on there. All right, we have some egg left over. Add that to your omelet the next day or breakfast for dinner, <laughs> I don't know. Now we're gonna sprinkle this evenly with a quarter cup of Parmesan cheese that you've grated ahead of time or bought pre-grated if you're busy. We're adding about a tablespoon of fresh thyme leaves here as well. So beautiful, I love them. You can feel free to add in a little bit extra if you want to. No one's gonna judge you. 
right now we're going to add about half a teaspoon of a flaky salt this is malden sea salt my favorite brand not sponsored just love it uh, it gives you these giant flakes of salt but unlike table salt or iodized salt they're not ultra harsh salt it's kind of a mellower salt just by the by finish it off with a little bit of cracked ground pepper i'm putting some extra cheese on here because it's like four months away from my birthday and i deserve it this is all supposed to be done on parchment paper. I forgot. Be right back. Okay, let's see if we can make some magic happen here. Okay, we're gonna cut this into several pieces, however big you want. They can be hanging off the side of the bowl or even just in the soup right when you serve it. Okay, slide this on. Doing this totally backwards, but it worked. We're gonna separate the puff pastry pieces just a little bit. The dough is getting spread out into two different baking sheets so it's not too crowded. I'm going to bake it at 400 Fahrenheit for about 15 minutes or until it's nice and golden. In you go. Totally forgot, but it's fine that since it's puff pastry, we're actually going to compress it with a second baking sheet on top. So put a second baking sheet on top and then pop it into the oven or, you know, bake it for a few minutes, remember the instructions and then put it on. Whichever one works best for you. <laughs> All right. so. Very hot, but let's see what happened. Clearly one escaped, just had to puff up, couldn't be held back. All right, these look good. I don't even mind that little one that's puffed up. When you're ready to serve the soup, sprinkle some of the bacon on top if you haven't eaten it already while you're waiting for the soup to finish. I know you. And then pop a little cracker in there. You can give them to people on the side too, or serve them like, you know, however you want. They're delicious. These potatoes are so creamy. I can't even tell you. When I was like recipe testing this, it was real dangerous. I was just like, add more potatoes. I need more. Mm. That is everything you want in a bite. Oh my gosh. Crispy, cheesy, savory, creamy. Ah. Oh. If this soup looked delicious to you, but you want to up the ante even a little bit more, make my fried sage cheesy biscuits. You will be in heaven. You can skip the Parmesan cracker if you want, and it is just so tasty. It goes perfect with this. If you like my videos, hit that like button and subscribe, and I'll see you soon.